Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a thrift flip for you guys. So I've seen a lot of coats um, made out of blankets lately and I really, really wanna try my hand at a coat. But the problem is that it's just not realistic for California. I would melt in a blanket coat. So I thought, how can I make that work for me? And I thought, why not curtains? I see so many beautiful curtains at my thrift store. So I looked up a lot of inspiration from Pinterest with these tapestry looking coats. So I found my fabric and I'm so excited to make this coat. In the beginning of the year, I talked about wanting to make a winter coat and I kind of put it off and I was a little nervous because it started to heat up, but it's actually cooling down this March, so I think I still have some time to wear this coat, and I'm hoping it only takes me a couple of days. Future Ariel here ended up actually getting really sick, so this coat took me more like a couple weeks than a couple days, and you can really hear it in my voice at the end, so apologies for that. So here is the fabric that I found. I found this lovely olive green tapestry uh, curtain. It has some red and some purple in it, but it's very muted. Well, down here it's pretty bright, but I kind of like the little accents that it has through it, but it's mostly green. In the sunlight, it comes off as mostly green with this really pretty gold embroidery going on with it. Um, so I was able to find this huge curtain. I, I literally needed me and my husband to hold it out to see how much yardage it has. I want to say it has almost two and a half, which is great for a coat. At that same thrift store, I was able to find my inner lining fabric, which is this very muted mint green colored curtain. And there were two of them, which is perfect. Um, so I got both of them so I don't run out of fabric. If you'd like to see how I turned these curtains into a coat, then keep on watching. So let's talk pattern pieces. I took a coat that I already had and I liked the measurements on myself and I copied that pattern onto some crafting paper. Um, I originally drew the outlines of each piece without seam allowance. Once I got a shape that I liked, I then uh, drew harder lines and then added seam allowance to those. So I ended up cutting out a front panel piece um, you can kind of see my original sketch versus the added seam allowance I gave myself. And when I cut the fabric out, um, I think I even gave myself just a little bit more um, because when I put the pattern pieces up against myself and kind of felt like where they would sit, um, even with my added seam allowance, I felt like it would just be a little bit too snug. So I gave myself more wiggle room with that but I ended up using this front panel piece and I cut out uh, two opposites of each fabric um, because I've done this in the past where I'll be like, oh, I need two front panel pieces. And I'll literally cut out like one panel piece like this and then lay it down on the fabric and cut it out this way again. And I'm like, oh, that was wasteful because now when you try to sew it on, one is gonna be the wrong side. So. Um, yeah, just make sure that you check, double check before you cut your fabric. But this is my front panel piece that I cut out. So my back panel piece, I originally uh, sketched out in one um, on one piece of paper, but when I made adjustments to it, I ended up cutting it in, um, not in half, but just cutting off the top shoulder part um, and then opening it up to make the bottom part longer because I wanted a dart in the back to give um, a little bit more shoulder room um, or at least like be able to like rotate my arms and not feel like I'm like gonna rip out of the jacket. So I ended up doing about an inch dart in the back. So I added an inch down the middle and then retraced out my back piece and kept the yoke of the back the same. So you can see it's shorter, but once you add the dart in, everything lines up really well. So this was my yoke, this was my back panel. And again, I added my seam allowance after I had done the initial sketch. Then I cut out my sleeve. Um, I had to do this like three times because I wasn't sure if I was doing it properly. I feel like sleeves, 
are so easy to mess up, or at least they're just really difficult for me. Um, this was my original sketch. And then I ended up adding more length um, that was unnecessary. I ended up cutting it off anyways. This one probably would have sufficed, but um, I was just nervous. So it's better to give yourself more sleeve than having less sleeve because then you're going to have a really tight shoulder. Um, but yeah, so I ended up cutting out two of these. And then when I pinned it to my jacket, I ended up cutting off like almost three inches of off the top but again when you're making your own pattern it is better to kind of overestimate than under um, in this situation so for the details of the jacket i kind of winged them um, because these were not originally added onto um, my my coat that i was making the pattern from but i knew that i wanted a little color so i traced out this um long rectangle and on the pattern i just documented that um or i marked that i wanted a fold um so to fold the fabric over on this side so i didn't cut out a rectangle exactly this length i cut out basically double but i indicated that on my pattern those little details will be really important because you can cut out like pattern pieces and if you don't write down like the specifics of what that pattern piece is you'll just have a piece of paper and be like i don't remember what i need this for so if you have any sort of indications on there that you need to fold it or that um there are different little marks that uh notches that will meet up on the actual garment itself mark those down you'll you won't remember them i promise you just write them down I ended up doing a welted pocket on my coat. Um, that was my first time ever doing one. I had never done a welted pocket before. So I looked up a couple uh, videos on how to do a welted pocket. And you basically need a covering for the opening of it. So again, I just, instead of just making a smaller one with a marking that said fold, I it was pretty small, so I just ended up cutting out my um, pocket cover in this rectangle, and then then I cut out uh, two pocket pieces um, with this shape. Um, and then again, I made sure that everything was gonna line up um, the same size because that is important. <laughs> so. Those are my pattern pieces I drafted from a coat that I previously owned. This is something that you can do for a lot of the clothing that you already have. Um, it's something that I recommend um, if you're a little nervous about purchasing patterns. Drafting your own with craft paper can be really fun. Now it's time to cut out our fabric. When you thrift your fabric, it's super important that you make sure ahead of time you have space for every pattern piece and you wanna look at the pattern's placement on the front of the coat and the back of the coat just to make sure that you like the pattern and how it's gonna lay. Now that I have all my pattern cut out of the fabric, I'm going to attempt welt pockets for the very first time. I believe that I can do it. Rosary Apparel made it look so easy to do, so I'm gonna give it my best shot, but if it doesn't go well, I'll have to figure something out because I have no more fabric to recut out the front panels. So I'm a little nervous, but let's get into it. So I'm gonna start by marking on my two front panels with a water erasable pen where exactly I want my pockets to be placed on both of them. And I want them side by side so I can make them as even as possible. Next step is to sew the pocket covers with wrong sides facing together. Then we're going to lay that pocket piece on one side of the line we made for the pocket and pin it in place. Once you like the placement, you can go ahead and sew that down. Now you're going to lay the pocket piece with the outer fabric on the opposite side of the pocket cover and then the inner lining piece 
on top of the pocket cover. This is going to camouflage our pocket once we sew it together, that way it's not showing from the outside. Once you're happy with your pins, you can go ahead and sew both pockets in place. Now using scissors, cut open the pocket. Make sure to cut angled cuts into both corners of the pocket piece. This is where we're going to tuck the raw edges of our pocket covers into. Next, I sewed both of the pockets together on the inside and then tucked the corners of the pocket cover in and sewed those down as well. Now you have a functioning welted pocket. Once both pockets were done, I moved on to the back panel. I just added my yoke to the back with the dart that we created and I pinned it all in place until it fit perfectly within the yoke and then once I finished that, I sewed it down. Next, I sewed the front panels to the back panel at the shoulder seams. Once both shoulders were sewn together, I laid the coat flat and I pinned on both sleeves. I always like to start at the ends of the sleeve and I work my way up. In this case, I didn't want any gathering, so I just kept adjusting until my sleeve laid flat and I ended up taking quite a bit off the top of the sleeves, as you can see in this clip. Once my sleeves were pinned, I tried it on just to make sure that at the armpit it wasn't too tight. Then I sewed the tops of the sleeve and then began pinning from the armpit down the sides of the coat as well as down the arms. Then I sewed all the way around the coat. Here is the outer shell of the coat. I'm really liking the way that the shoulders are fitting and the way that the back looks. So at this point, I feel pretty comfortable moving on to the lining. For the lining, I wanted to add some of the outer fabric to the edge of the front panels. That way, when I flip the coat out, it's kind of flush with the outside of the coat. And I just did this by taking off about two inches of the front panel and adding the outer fabric on. Then I repeated all the previous steps to get my lining of my coat. I cannot decide if I want a collar on or off. This is it down and then I could pop it. Oh gosh. Or I could pop it. I don't know. Once I sew the lining together, there's no turning back. Like, I feel like it adds a cute little something, but... I don't know. Mm. Oh, but it looks so cute. I think I'm gonna add it. I think I'm gonna add it. I just sewed the collar on and I didn't finish the sides of the collar. I just sewed it on. Okay, I'm going to have to seam rip this off, sew the sides, pin it, and then re-sew it. Okay. This is my thread jar. I have been saving my threads to see actually how much thread I waste. Um, I seam rip a lot. I make a lot of mistakes and have to seam rip them. So I started this jar maybe two, three weeks ago. Look at that. That is ridiculous. 
but I'm gonna save them, use them for like stuffing or something. Just gonna pull out all the little scrap pieces. Now I can flip seize this back. And boom, finished edges. And now I can attach my collar back on. All right, the collar is sewn on to the outer part of the coat and now I'm going to attach the lining. So as I'm pinning the lining to the coat, I have right sides together and I'm sandwiching the collar in between to seal all the raw edges inside the lining. I have my coat fully pinned now and I'm gonna change the needle on my machine just cause the collar part is really thick and I don't want my needle to break. So I'm gonna change it for a thicker needle built for sewing thicker fabrics. So I'm changing out my needle from a 14 to a 16 needle and a 14 is more for like light to medium weight fabric and then a 16 is more heavyweight fabric so that should work really well for this kind of fabric. Once I changed my needle I sewed all the way along the collar down the front panels of the coat. So I'm just taking the sleeves because they're not like shoved into each other and I'm shoving the sleeve into itself. <laughs> okay, huzzah. Okay, so I have the coat on and it's giving Hamilton but that's okay because it's inside out. So I rolled up the sleeves and I'm gonna cut off this excess of the lining and leave about an inch of the outer fabric. That way I can fold it twice and then sew it down. For the sleeves, I used a blind hem stitch and I hand sewed this. If your machine comes with a blind hem stitch, then definitely use it, but for me, I just hand sewed mine. Blind hem stitch is great because it keeps everything secure on the inside, but completely invisible from the outside. I've got a lot done on the coat now. It's fully lined. I ironed down all of the seams so that way they lay flat. I ironed even the cuffs down as well. They're all lined. The last thing that I need to do for this coat is to even out the bottom hem because it's all still open. Um, so I'm going to even that out and then I think I'm gonna hand stitch it just cause I really am liking the way it's looking without having any top stitching done. So I'm gonna keep that theme going and I'm going to kind of use the same technique that I did for the invisible, um, the invisible stitch on the bottom of the coat. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. That is, I think, the last step to this coat. Then I hand stitched the blind hem onto my coat like I was Martha Washington and I just basically did this for the next hour. It took quite a long time but these are the perfect opportunities to catch up on some of my favorite shows. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe. I have more tutorials coming out soon and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.